Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. And on today's episode, we're going to react to the two first two games of the Sharks rookie tournament. Kind of talk about some guys who really impressed, some guys who kind of need to keep working on things and just, you know, enjoy enjoy hope season that is the rookies. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at Fear the Fan of San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you, of course, for making us your first listen. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, you can subscribe on YouTube. And we can actually say, Lockdown Sharks, your team every day, because we are back to five days a week and now, probably through the draft. So five days a week of Sharks content. We're going to keep – we're going to be covering the Sharks. We're going to be covering the Barracuda. We're going to get you guys ready for the draft. Going to have more interviews throughout the season. So plenty of content coming your way as I make my maiden voyage as the solo host of Locked on Sharks. If you guys are new or just kind of finding us, um, this is will actually be my halfway, I guess, season and a half, I guess, so that I've been, you know, I started uh, pandemic right after the, right before the pandemic started, uh, February 2020, but um, we are, we're here, we're going to be talking about the Sharks and I think we have to start with, you know, William Eklund. Um, if you joined the live stream I did on YouTube, I talked about William Eklund on Friday night. But if you're listening to the podcast or just, you know, want to talk about William Eklund again, um, he showed why he is so special. And I know people are going to say, who cares? It's a rookie tournament, et cetera, et cetera. If you go back, so in that, that Ducks, you know, they're, they're three to two win that the Sharks had in overtime. That Ducks roster is pretty good. Like these are a lot of highly touted guys. And if you look at the, the Ducks prospect pool rankings, they are usually up amongst the top five, you know, top three, a lot of times of, of prospect pools. They've been doing, they've been rebuilding this thing slowly and surely, and they have a lot of talented players, but William Eklund was the best player on the ice Friday night. I, in a game where Mason McTavish, who won the World Juniors MVP and was the third overall pick in that 2021 draft, William Eklund was the best player on the ice. He's finding his teammates. You know, he opened up the Bordelow goal. He set up another a two-on-one. And then when he needed to step in and score, he stepped in and scored. And that overtime play of him, you know, utilizing the the Eklon spinnies, which we know we love. We know we know that he knows that we love how much he does that. If that makes sense, but not only having the strength to power into the goal, you know, to power to the goaltender and be able to poke at home. You know, we're we're seeing Eklund with that extra strength that he spent all summer working on to try to make sure that he is ready for an NHL season. And I know. Much more quiet game in the Colorado game where the Sharks won five to one. But again, that's when you're second and third line and your defense is producing, you know, and the Sharks, they got up pretty early on, on the abs and they didn't have to continue to be, you know, as aggressive. And, you know, Eklund picked his spots in that game. Um, you know, that he had he had a couple nice plays to try there. But and that abs again going so looking at the abs team compared to the Ducks team. You know, the Avs have been trying to win a cup for the past couple of years. Their prospect pool is going to be much more shallow. They talked about how many in the broadcast. They talked about how many tryouts. I think they had 12 tryout guys um, because they just don't have enough. They haven't been picking higher. They haven't been making a lot of draft picks because they've been trying to win a cup. And that's just the cycle of, you know, where where teams are at. But William Eklund, um, I know making winning one game in rookie tournament doesn't make you a an NHL player, but you're seeing where he worked on those things that the Sharks told him to work on. And you're seeing that. So if he can carry this, you know, they have one more game today. Um, 
I'll be we'll 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 talk about it a little bit on tomorrow's episode, but they have one more game today, and then they're gonna start training camp on the 22nd. Propel this in, you know, you know he's gonna get a lot of ice time in the preseason games because they're gonna want to see what he can do against some better competition now. So um yeah, I, I think William Eklund took what the sharks told him to take in the offseason, put it to heart, you know kept his nose down, worked hard. And I think we're going to see William Eklund make the Sharks and, you know, be a contributor from the Sharks from day one. So I was really impressed with, with Eklund's game. And then I think you have to also tag Bordalo in as well. Um, Bordalo, the same thing, plenty of good shots was, you know, the one C for the team got a little dinged up at the end of the, the Ducks game, but good to see him back out there on Saturday night against the Avs. You know, plenty of shots and stuff. We're gonna we're gonna see him. You know, I still think it's a numbers game for him to try to make the Sharks out of camp, but you never know. So um, I thought he acquitted himself really well. He's gonna he's definitely gonna be bound. I think he's gonna be one of those guys that bounces between the Sharks and the Kudo all season long. Um, but yeah, he he played well tonight again. You know, was 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 great in the face off dot. Um, you know, was helping to. You know. I mean, what else can you say about Borlo? Borlo, he had a great weekend. So, um, yeah, I, I was really impressed with both those guys. And I think kind of the other guy I really, really want to talk about to kind of start things off. Um, I talked about him on, he didn't, he played on Friday, but didn't play on Saturday was uh, Artemi Knaizev, who really, I thought, if you listen to me on the, the live stream and repeat myself again, but the way his game you know, you can tell he's much more comfortable than he was last year. If you watched any of the Kudo last year where, you know, he struggled the first half and he really gained his confidence in the second half. And you can see that confidence is continuing to build. Was um, quarterbacking the power play on the second power play unit. Uh, was also great in his own end. Great. I, I really like his game. I think we're going to see him really take a big step this year as he continues to kind of develop and you know, sometimes I know the Kudu were a hot mess last year. And, you know, especially when you're you're playing a lot of these younger defensemen. And it takes longer for these younger defensemen to kind of figure things out. So I'm really excited for where um, his game is going. I really liked his back checking his, um, as well. There was a he, – he helped to break up a potential – I think it was a potential two-on-one or, or a potential breakaway. Um, he looked really great. I, I was really impressed with him. And then again, if he can add that offensive piece, I think that was what the the coaching staff and wanted him to kind of work on um, was adding that offensive piece. And you know, I think depending on Ryan Merkley, I think he's going to you know Kanijov is going to get a lot of power play time to kind of work on being that power play quarterback for for the Barracuda, and hopefully work on those offensive skills that he can bring that can help to translate to five on five as well, you know, running the, the running the team and finding those open guys and just shooting more. I think, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of point shots, but sometimes, you know, if you have the right guys on the ice, like having those guys, you can just kind of chip it in. And I think your wise lots, your codes, uh, your Robins, those guys can do damage up front of the net. And we'll, we'll talk about some of those guys here in a minute. Um, but again, you know, just, I think being a little bit more aggressive in the offensive zone for, for Kanizhev or, or Kanizov, sorry. That was, can... anyway, Kanizov, Kanizhev, uh, Artemi, he, uh, being a little more aggressive in the offensive zone with him. Um, I think that we'll start to pay dividends in his game, but, uh, before we continue, do you want to take a quick break? Talk to you guys about our friends over at bet online. You guys know BetOnline is your number one source for your pro and college football betting needs and sports information uh, this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts um, as we're finishing up game uh, the second week right now. Going to be starting the third week here soon of the NFL. I can't believe it's already here. Um, so BetOnline is your continuous source for sports wagering need, uh, information, including live betting, which is really fun. Uh, if you were a smart person and maybe live bet the Dolphins, uh, you're probably feeling really good about yourself uh, today. So you also have eSports, and they're the fastest and easiest way to check on your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. We have a new graphic on there now, too, if you're on, on YouTube. So 
Um, yeah, so we talked about, you know, those, I think those three guys were kind of the guys I was really impressed with um, the most. Uh, some of the other guys who, you know, I, I thought had good weekends as well. Um, one, Jake Furlong, who was the Sharks uh, 2022 draft pick um, out of the uh, Halifax out of the queue. Really, I thought showed himself well. Um, he, especially because the uh, first night against the the Ducks, he was playing on the bottom line. Had a couple sp uh, splash plays, but then the second night against the Abs, got that first line minutes, and I really was impressed with his game. Uh, both zones was also quarterbacking the power play unit as well, the power play two unit as well. You can see with him, um, you know, in the queue, it's going to be much more offensive game. Um, like you know, out of the three. Uh, CHL leagues, the queue is definitely more offensive oriented. So you're going to see a little bit of inflation in numbers, but if he can continue to work on his defensive game while still providing that offense, uh, I think the Sharks might have, you know, potentially found something here. So we'll see how he goes. But again, I liked his game. I thought he was active in the defensive zone, made a couple good plays, especially he uh, stopped Mason McTavish from scoring on Friday night. And then I thought, again, same thing in an elevated role on Saturday night against the Avs. I thought, again, he made some good plays uh, both in his own zone and in the offensive zone. So just, you know, want to kind of give him a shout out. Um, let's talk about the goaltenders too. Um, Strassman got the start, played the whole game on Friday night. Um, I thought he looked great. You know, the, the two goals he gave up, you know, the, the Ducks were really kind of pushing the pace in the second period. And but I think I think the Sharks really found something with Strassman. I would be shocked if he's not the kind of starter getting, the, getting a lot of the run for the CUDA. Um, you know, I know he's a little bit of a smaller goaltender, but sometimes, you know, those guys, you you can just kind of see it with those guys and Straussman, very calm goaltender. You can tell where it's just like, nothing really kind of phases him. He's very going to be technically sound. He's always in the right position and, you know, it gets, I think, uh, a full season, uh, with the guy here. I think we might be talking about him as a potential, you know, making the sharks next season. If, if he has a good season with, with the Barracuda. Um, and then Mason Bopit, who started the second uh, the second game, the Saturday night game, um, was probably should have had a shutout. Um, you know, he definitely had some up and down moments. Uh, you know, playing the puck in his own uh, zone, he, he creamed it, hit the boards, and uh, basically had a kind of diving save to keep uh, keep the Cotto from scoring on an open net, but. You know, he only lit up one goal in that goal. They were it was a five-one-three um, situation late in the third, where both teams were playing, were being a little kind of a, a little scrappy there, and you know the Sharks were taking some penalties that they probably should not have taken. And then you know five-one-three, it's it's usually just a matter of time. So, uh, but Bo Pitt though, he made some great saves. He had some, you know, I think the first first save of the game that you know he is basically a a mini breakaway that he makes a stop on. Definitely has some good saves throughout as well. Uh, some very high danger saves that he made, made some good saves on. So I um, really liked Bo Pitt's game. I think this year when he, as he, when he goes back to, to Spokane, um, hopefully a little bit better team and around him. So we can kind of really see him continue to develop. So not sure who's going to be playing on uh, Monday's game. I really hope we see Goudreau um, play um, just because, you know, I, I want to see how his game is continued to progress. So um, that's my hope is that we see Goudreau. Maybe they might split it and Goudreau and Iman or Goudreau and uh, Itu Makanemi, who we haven't seen at all. But I wonder if they're being very um, kind of careful with him as he works his way back from his injury. And maybe we'll, we'll start to see him ramp up here as uh, training camp for the Sharks start. And then, of course, training camp for the, the Barracuda as well. So, um and then some guys who had some kind of rough nights and then maybe followed up. I want to like uh, Robbins and co um, I think their games on Friday night, maybe weren't where they, we wanted them to be, you know, uh, Robbins was, was okay on Friday night. Co I thought was, was didn't have his best game, you know, definitely made some mistakes, made some lazy passes, uh, but they both responded well and had great games on Saturday night. Um, co winning, you know, setting up the Rob first Robbins goal, co winning a battle behind the net, and then you know, be able to kind of a nice little backhand pass to Robbins, who's left all alone or from the goalie. You know, if you leave Robbins alone, he's he's going to tear you apart. And then, 
uh, Robbins with the second goal on the power play where, you know, he, he takes it um, at the dot and just kind of works his way in and again, just absolutely annihilates the uh, water bottle there. Poor goalie didn't have too much of a chance, but um, that's what you want to see with these guys where, you know, Co you know, has played a full season in the AHL and, and Robbins, who's played some games in the AHL, you want to see these guys to kind of get their confidence going and, you know, be able to take what they've learned last year in the W or last year in the OHL and now apply it on a, against some better competition. So, um, yeah, I thought those, both those guys really responded well. Um, Ozzy Weisblatt, you can see why you, Mike Greer is going to love this guy. Um, definitely was the agitator. Would like to see a little bit more offense out of him. We know it's there, um, but I'd like to see him continue to kind of work and be a little bit more, um, do a little bit more in the offensive zone and kind of uh, being that guy who can not only be an agitator, but also score um, as well. So, um, yeah, I, I liked Ozzy's game. Uh, Gushin, he had that really nice goal. Um, took some really quality shots. You you think for him, he's a he's a natural shooter. Like he's going to shoot. He'll be fine once you know. Once usually with those guys, once you see a goal or two go in, like then your confidence starts to build. So, um, kind of the with him sometimes a little bit quiet in the offensive zone, but uh, I, I think for him it's just going to be a confidence thing and. You know, he got he got did get to play some Barracuda games last year, and I thought he looked really good, especially last year on the Barracuda, where that the talent just isn't where it is now. So hopefully, with him playing with some of these guys and you know having more talent, this is probably going to be the most talent that he's had around him. I mean, if you look, you know, last year on the Ice Dogs, he you know basically double the amount of points of anybody else on his team, um, and then the year before that, when he was in the USHL. Again, basically double at anybody other's points. So it'll be interesting to see how he plays with actual talent around him if, if that'll, you know, help to get the most out of him. So um before we continue and look at you know some of the some of the defenders uh nights, um wanna take a quick break, let you guys know, of course, about the locked on NHL show. Uh thank you guys, of course, for making locked on sharks your first listen. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. But when you're done with this, go check out the Locked On NHL show. Uh, they're getting you guys ready as the uh, season is right around the corner. So they got, you know, local experts. I think like Wednesdays or Western Conference Wednesdays, Thursdays, they usually do power rankings. Um, so make sure you guys go check out that when you guys are done listening to this. Again, Locked On NHL, wherever you get podcasts, and of course on YouTube as well. All right. Let's finish up. Um, I want to talk about some of the, the, the defenders that really kind of stuck out to me. Uh, Ryan Merkley, again, you see it with him where it's just so much of a – he does great things like the coast-to-coast -coast in the again, game against the uh, against Colorado. Takes it from his, in his own net, works through the middle, you know, through the neutral zone, splits through two defenders, and gets a really high-quality chance off. You love to see that you the, the patience he has at the blue line. Um, sometimes though, you wish you would kind of I don't want to say like speed up, but kind of process things a little bit quicker. You know, maybe or sometimes just know when to live for another day, where maybe you just pass it to your to your teammate and you know kind of reset things. Sometimes I think he still does try to do a little too much. You can get away with that in the rookie games, but when you're playing NHL caliber talent, you think bad things are going to happen. And we, we saw that with Merkley last year, you know, uh, several times where even on the same shift where you can do something amazing and then all of us, and then on the same shift, you, you try to do a little bit too much. So um, I do hate the simplify your game thing, but I think for him trying to kind of, that's going to be his big thing, right? Is finding the balance between what makes him so special and then, you know, just, being an everyday NHL player. So if you can kind of scale back that stuff a little bit and, and you know, not make such critical mistakes sometimes, um, I think he'll be fine. But you, you definitely see it there with him. Um, and then Montana Anyabuchi, uh, I think he's well on his way to being a fan favorite of the Sharks where, you know, definitely is going to be that gritty defenseman who does a lot of uh, – <laughs> a lot of – stuff to the, that the other team does not like but um I, I i think you know did provide did have a really nice goal i do want to see him work on not having so many penalties i know that's part of his game is to um not 
be is to kind of be under the other team's skin. But you know, he I think he had six penalty minutes um, in the in Saturday night's game. You know, it's just and those are penalty minutes where it's like you're you're up five nothing, man. Like let's let's just it's fine. Let's just let it go type of thing. You know, you don't want to be putting your team on the penalty kill so many times. You know, I think the Sharks were on the, I mean, it's, it's good to see the Sharks practice those situations being on the power play and the penalty kill, but at the same time, you, you don't want to instill these habits of taking penalties that you should not be taking type of thing. So I'm really interested to see how he kind of progresses and if he can kind of be that next defender out of nowhere type of situation who can hopefully, um, you know, play really solid D and, you know, the occasional point here and there type of thing, but got to work on those penalties. And, you know, speaking of that, the, the penalties, I get Mike Greer, the grit, that's, that's going to be the thing now, but it's some of these penalties where, you know, you're just taking bad penalties for no reason. And, you know, there was too, too many men on the uh, call over the weekend. One of them is on the, the penalty kill, which is just, brutal having a too many men uh call on the penalty kill like you, you you can't do that to yourself so really want to make sure you know coach mccarthy works on trying to clean this stuff up you know not shooting yourself in the foot i know the sharks are in the barracuda are gonna be much or the barracuda are gonna be a much more talented team that they have in the past but we see this all time where teams that just make dumb penalties you're really you shoot yourself in the foot and you're really asking your team to have to do much more than, it, than they already are to try to win. And I know the sharks are much more talented, but we're, we are still projecting with these guys and it's going to take a little bit for them to kind of learn how to win games and learn how to be professionals and all that fun stuff. So don't make it harder on yourself by taking penalties that you don't need to be taking. So I think that's that one of my takeaways is, how can coach McCarthy help kind of clean this up and, you know, guys like Ozzy and guy, you know, like that and rat Adam Raska when he plays and some of these guys who are a little bit more instigators, how can you play without kind of going over the edge? And that's, that's something I think coach McCarthy will have to instill into these young guys and work with these guys type of situation. So, um, Overall, I mean, very promising start to the Sharks rookie tournament, winning both games, you know, the three to two overtime victory against um, the Ducks. Again, the Ducks have a really, really solid prospect pool. I mean, so should be proud of the way they played. You know, the stars for for the Sharks came out and played that night against some really high quality players from from the Ducks. And, you know, again, back to, to Eklund. Owen Zellweger, like he's really good, man. Like that that's a really good defenseman that Eklund kind of took his lunch. So um, yes, that, that was great. And you know, I, again, back to I think a lot of stuff to be proud of. You some stuff you want to work on, right? You want to kind of work on making sure that you're not being so heavily penalized um type of team. And you know, there's gonna be a little bit of sloppy hockey in August right now or September as those team guys are kind of fighting their stamina and their rhythm and playing against you're going to see some of that you know the, those lazy penalties with the sick infractions and stuff like that but i really was happy with the way the sharks played their, their penalty kill looks good they they i think they were one for seven against the the abs you know especially with these guys who haven't played much together that that's more about the system and trying to you know play smart hockey so i was really impressed with that and again you know it's seeing contributions from a lot of guys, whereas Robbins or Anya Bucci or Gurev, you know, Gurev who scored not many points for the Petersburg Peets. Good to see him get on, on the board. So um, yeah, so far pretty, pretty solid. Um, first two days we'll be back tomorrow where we'll look at, talk about um, the results from uh, kind of takeaways from Monday's game. Um, won't be probably won't be too much live tweeting from that for me. I'll be at work at the time because I think it's a, a 3.30 in the afternoon game. Um, and then we're gonna start getting ready for training camp here. So we'll we'll discuss uh you know some of the big storylines heading into the training camp. Uh Shang is scheduled to come back on, so I believe he'll be on for Thursday's episode. And then we got some other fun stuff uh ready for you guys. So we're here, it's hockey time. We got exciting young prospects to talk about plenty of storylines for the sharks 
where you know plenty of training camp battles who's going to be making the team who's not who's what are they going to do with all those forwards who's going to take that second um pair of defensemen behind ryan or behind eric carlson like there's a lot of stuff for the sharks to try to figure out here and then and the next couple weeks so uh, we'll be here for all of it uh, so make sure you guys are following along uh, especially on social media so you guys can make sure you follow on twitter facebook and instagram especially on twitter during the games going to try to do more of the kind of clipping like i did that uh over the weekend for the the two prospect games doing, doing that on twitter um and then of course you can listen wherever you get podcasts apple spotify odyssey uh you name it you can listen to it there youtube make sure you guys subscribe there uh did a live show on friday night it was really fun to hang out with some of you guys and kind of talk about what, what you guys thought of, of you know the first game so we'll probably be doing that some more especially on the weekends um you know especially friday night games where we maybe not won't have a podcast or if they're doing you know two games over the weekend want to try to get our thoughts in on that so make sure you guys subscribe on youtube for the live streams and then you can follow me on twitter at my fry hole again we'll be back tomorrow with a talk about what happened in uh in today's rookie tournament camp so game so and that'll do it. Bye, friends.